Welcome to my book nook. Good morning, my friends, and welcome back to my book nook. And we're getting ready to start a brand new book. Um, I was thinking it was going to start at the first of the year. It might be just a dab early, but it's called The Help by Catherine Socket. Stockett, sorry. Uh, you may have already seen the movie, but trust me, the book is always better. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and let's get started. The very first chapter is called Abilene. Abilene. Chapter 1, August 1962. May Mobley was born on an early Sunday morning in August 1960. A church baby, we like to call it. Taking care of white babies, that's what I do, along with all the cooking and the cleaning. I done raised 17 kids in my lifetime. I know how to get them babies to sleep, stop crying, and go in the toilet bowl before they, they mamas even get out of bed in the morning. But I ain't ever, never seen a baby yell like Mae Mobley Lee Folt. First day I walk in the door, there she be, red hot and hollering with the colic, fighting that bottle like it's a rotten turnip. Miss Lee Folt, she looked terrified at her own child. What am I doing wrong? Why can't it stop? It? That was my first hint. Something is wrong with this situation. So I took that pink screaming baby in my arms, bounced her on my hip to get the gas moving, and it didn't take two minutes for baby girls to stop crying. Her. Got to smiling up at me like she do. But Miss Leafold, she don't pick up her own baby for the rest of the day. I've seen plenty of women get the baby blues after they done birthing. I reckon I thought that's what it was. Here's something about Miss Leafold. She not just frowning all the time. She's skinny. Her legs is so spindly she look like she done growed them last week. 23 years old, she lanky as a 14-year-old boy. Even her hair is thin, brown, see-through. She tried to tease it up, but it only to make it look thinner. Her face be the same shape as that red devil on the red hot candy box, pointy chin and all. Fact, her whole body be so full of sharp knobs and corners, it's no wonder she can't soothe that baby. Babies lack fat, like to bury their face up in your armpit and go to sleep. They like big fat legs too, that I know. By the time she a year old, May Mobley follow me around everywhere I go. Five o'clock would come round and she'd be hanging on me on my Dr. Scholl shoe, dragging over the floor, crying like I weren't never coming back. Miss Lee Fultz should narrow up her eyes at me like I'd done something wrong and hitch that crying baby off my foot. I reckon that's the risk you run letting somebody else raise you children's. Chillins. May Mobley two years old now. She got big brown eyes and honey color her curls. But the ball spa on the back of her hair kind of throws things off. She get the same wrinkles between her eyebrows when she worried like her mama. They kind of favor except May Mobley so fat. She ain't going to be no beauty queen. I think it bother Miss Leifold. But May Mobley, my special baby. I lost my own boy, Tree Lore, right before I started waiting on Miss Leifold. He was 24 years old. The best part of a person's life, it just wasn't enough time living in this world. He had him a little apartment over on Foley Street, seeing a real nice girl named Frances, and I expect they was going to get married. But he was slow about getting about things like that, not because he was looking for something better, just because he was thinking, the thinking kind. Wore big glasses and reading all the time. He even started writing his own book about being a colored man, living and working in Mississippi. Law. That made me proud. But one night he working late at the Scanlon Taylor Mill, lugging two by fours to the truck, splinters slicing all the way through his gloves. He too small for that kind of work, too skinny, but he needed the job. He was tired. It was raining. He slipped off the loading dock, fell down on the drive. Tractor trailer didn't see him and crushed his lungs before he could move. By the time I found out, he was dead. That was the day my whole world went black. Air looked black, sun looked black. I laid up in bed and stared all the, at the black walls of my house. Minnie came every day to make sure I was still breathing, feed me food to keep me living. Took three months before I even looked out the window to see if the world was still there. I was surprised to see the world didn't stop just because my boy did. Five months after the funeral, I lifted myself, myself up out of bed. I put on my white uniform and put my little gold cross back around my neck. And I went to wait on Miss Leafle because she just have her baby girl. But it weren't too long before I seen something in me had changed. 
a bitter seed was planted inside of me, and I just didn't feel so accepting anymore. Get the house straightened up and then go on and fix some of that chicken salad now, said Miss Leafold. It's bridge club day every fourth Wednesday of the month. Of course, I already got everything ready to go. Made the chicken salad this morning. Ironed the tablecloths yesterday. Miss Leafolt see me at it, too. She ain't but 23 years old, and she like hearing herself tell me what to do. She already got the blue dress on, and I ironed this morning. This one was 65 pleats on the waist. So tiny, I got to squint through my glasses to iron. I don't hate much in life, but me and that dress is not on good terms. And you make sure May Mobley's not coming in on us now. I tell you, I am so burned up at her, tore up my good stationery into 5,000 pieces, and I got 15 thank you notes for the junior lead to do. I arranged the this and that for her lady friends, set out the good crystal, put the silver service out. Miss Leafolt don't put up no dinky cards like the other ladies do. We sit at the dining room table, put a cloth over, on top to cover the big L-shaped crack, move that red flower centerpiece to the sideboard to hide where the wood all scratched. Miss Leafolt, she like it fancy when she do a luncheon. Maybe she's trying to make up for the house being so small. They ain't rich folks. That I know, rich folk don't try so hard. I'm used to working for young couples, but I expect this is the smallest house I ever worked in. It's just the one story, her and Mr. Leafolt's room in the back be a fair size, but baby girl's room be tiny. The dining room and the regular living room kind of join up. Only two bathrooms, which is a relief because I worked in houses where there was five or six. Take a whole day just to clean toilets. Miss Leafle don't pay but nine to five cents an hour, less than I've been paid in years. But after Tree Lord died, I took what I could. Landlord wasn't going to wait much longer. And even though it's small, Miss Leafle done the house up nice as she can. She pretty good with the sewn machine. Anything she can't buy new of, she just get her some blue material and sew it a cover. The doorbell ring and I open it up. Hey, Abilene, Miss Skeeter say, cause she's the kind that speak to the help. How are you? Hey, Miss Skeeter, I'm all right. La, it's hot out there. Miss Skeeter, real tall and skinny, her hair be yellow and cut short above her shoulders, cause she get the frizz year round. She 23 or so, same as Miss Leafold and the rest of them. She set her pocketbook on the chair, kind of itch around in her clothes a second. She wearing a white lace blouse buttoned up like a nun. Flat shoes, so I reckon she don't look any taller. Her blue skirt ga it gapes open at the waist. Miss Skeeter always looked like somebody else told her what to wear. I hear Miss Healy and her mama, Miss Walter, put up the driveway and toot the horn. Miss Healy don't live but ten feet away, but she always drive over. I let her in and she go right past me and I figure it's a good time to get Mae Mobley up from her nap. Soon as I walk in her nursery, Mae Mobley smile at me, reach out her fat little arms. You already up, baby girl? Why didn't you holler for me? She laugh, dance a little happy jig waiting on me to get her out. I give her a good hug. I reckon she don't get too many good hugs like this after I go home. Ever so often I come to work and find her bawling in her crib. Miss Leafolt busy on the sewing machine, rolling her eyes like it's a stray cat stuck in the screen. See, Miss Leafolt, she dress up nice every day. Always got her makeup on, got a carport, double door frigid air with the built-in icebox. You see her in the Jitney 14 grocery. You never think she'd go and leave her baby crying in her crib like that. But the help always know. Today's a good day. That girl just grins. I say... Abilene, she say, Abby, I say, love, she say, love, I say, me Mobley, she say, Abby, then she laugh and laugh, she's so tickled, she talking, and I got to say, it's about time, true lord didn't say nothing till he too either, by the time he in third grade though, he get to talking better than the president of the U uh, the United States coming home using words like conjugation and parliamentary. He get in junior high and we play this game where I give him a real simple word and he got to come up with a fancy one like it. I say house cat and he say domesticated feline. I say mixer and he say motorized rotunda. One day I say Crisco. He scratch his head. He just can't believe I done won the game with something simple as Crisco. 
came to be a secret joke with us, meaning something you can't dress up no matter how you try. We start calling his daddy Crisco, cause you can't fancy up a man done run off on his family. Plus, he's the greasiest no count you ever known. I tote Mae Mobley into the kitchen and put her in her high chair, thinking about two chores I need to finish today for Miss Leafold have a fit. Separate the napkins that started to fray and straighten up the silver service in the cabinet. Oh, I'm on have to do it while the ladies is here, I guess. I take the tray of deviled eggs out to the dining room and Miss Leafolt setting it at the head and to her left be Miss Healy Holbrook and Miss Healy's mama, Miss Walter, who Miss Healy don't treat with no respect. And then on Miss Leafolt's right be Miss Skeeter. I make the egg rounds starting with old Miss Walter first because she's the elder. It's warm in here, but she got a thick brown sweater drooped around her shoulders. She scoop an egg up and near about drop it cause she getting the palsy. Then I move over to Miss Healy and she smile and take two. Miss Healy got a round face and dark brown hair in the beehive. Her skin be olive color with freckles and moles. She wear a lot of red plaid and she getting heavy in the bottom. Today, since it's so hot, she wearing a red sleeveless dress with no waist to it. She one of those grown ladies that still dress like a little girl with big bows and matching hat, hats and such. She ain't my favorite. I move over to Miss Skeeter, but she wrinkles her nose up at me and says, No thanks, because she don't eat no eggs. I tell Miss Leafolt every time she have the bridge club, and she make me do them eggs anyway. She scared Miss Healy be disappointed. Finally, I do Miss Leafolt. She the hostess, so she got to pick up her eggs last. And soon as I'm done, Miss Healy says, Don't mind if I do, and snatch herself two more eggs, which don't surprise me. Guess who I ran into at the beauty parlor, Miss Healy, say to the ladies. Who's that? asked Miss Lee Folt. Celia Foot. And you know what she asked me? If she could help me with the benefit this year. Good, Miss Skeeter said. We need it. Not that bad, we don't, I told her. I said, Celia. You have to be a league member or a, a sustainer to participate. What does she think the Jackson League is, Open Rush? Aren't we ta ta taking non-members this year since the benefits gotten so big? Miss Skeeter asks. Well, yes, Miss Hilly says, but I wasn't about to tell her that. I can't believe Johnny married a, go a girl so tacky like she is, Miss Leafolt said. Miss Hilly nod. She started dealing out the bridge cards. I spoon out the congealed salad and the ham sand sandwiches. Can't help but listen to the chatter. Only three things some ladies talk about. The kids, they clothes, and they friends. I hear the word Kennedy. I know they ain't discussing no politic. They talk about what Miss Jackie done wore on the TV. When I get around to Miss Walter, she don't take but one little old half a sandwich for herself. Mama! Miss Hilly, Hilly yelled at Miss Walter. Take another sandwich. You are skinny as a telephone pole. Miss Hilly look over at the rest of the table. I keep telling her if that Minnie can't cook, she needs to just go on and fire her. My ears perk up, up at this. They're talking about the help. I'm best friends with Minnie. Minnie cooks fine, says old Miss Walter. I'm just not so hungry like I used to be. Many near about the best cook in Hines County, maybe even all of Mississippi. The Junior League benefit come around ever fall, and they be want her to make ten caramel cakes to auction off. She ought to be the most sought after help in the state. Problem is, Minnie got a mouth on her. She always talking back. One day it be the white manager at the Jitney Jungle Grocery. Next day it be her husband, and every day it gonna be the white lady she waiting on. The only reason she waiting on Miss Walter so long as Miss Walter be deaf as a dough knob. I think you're malnourished, Mama, holler Miss Hilly. That mini ain't feeding you so sh that she can steal every last heirloom I have left. Miss Hilly huff uh, out of her chair. I'm going to the powder room. Y'all watch her in case she collapses dead of hunger. When Miss Hilly gone, Miss Walter say real low, I bet you'd love that. Everybody act like they didn't hear I better call Minnie tonight tell her what Miss Healy said. In the kitchen, baby girl up in her high chair got purple juice all over her face. Soon as I walk in, she smile. She don't make no fuss being in here by herself, but I hate to leave her too long. I know she stared at that door real quiet till I come back. I pat her little soft head and go back out to pour the iced tea. Miss Healy's back in her chair looking all bowed up about something else now. 
Oh, Hilly, I wish you'd use the guest bathroom, said Miss Leafolt, rearranging her guards. Abilene doesn't clean in the back until after lunch. Hilly raised her chin up. Then she gave one of her uh, hands. She got this way of clearing her throat real delicate like that, get everybody attention without they even knowing she made them do it. But the guest bathroom's where the help goes, Miss Hilly said. Nobody says anything for a second. Then Miss Walter nod, like she explaining it all. She's upset because the nigger uses the inside bathroom, and so do we. La, not this mess again. They all look over at me, straightening the silver drawer in the sideboard, and I know it's time for me to leave. But before I can get the last spoon in there, Miss Leaf will give me the look and say, Go get some more tea, Abilene. I go like she tell me to you, even though they cups is full to the rim. I stand around the kitchen a minute, but I ain't got nothing left to do in there. I need to be in the dining room so I can finish my silver straightening, and I still got the napkin cabinet to sort through today, but it's in the hall right outside where they sat and I don't want to stay late just because Miss Leafolt playing cards. I wait a few minutes, wipe a counter, give baby girl more ham, and she gobble it up. Finally, I slip out to the hall, pray nobody see me. All four of them got a cigarette in one hand and the cards in the other. Elizabeth, if you have the choice, I hear Miss Hilly say, Would you, wouldn't you rather take them take their business outside? Real quiet, I open the napkin drawer, more concerned about Miss Leafolt seeing me than what they saying. This talk ain't news to me. Everywhere in town they got a colored bathroom. And most of the houses do too, but I look over and Miss Skeeter's watching me and I freeze, thinking I'm about to get in trouble. I bid one heart, Miss Walter say. I don't know, Miss Leapfolt say, frowning at her cards. With Riley starting his own business and taxis and not for six months, things are real tight for us right now. Miss Hilly talks slow like she's spread and icing on a cake. You just tell Riley every penny he spends on that bathroom he'll get back when y'all sell this house. She nod like she's agreeing with herself. All these houses they're building without maids' quarters, it's just plain dangerous. Everybody know they carry different kinds of diseases than we do. I double. I pick up a stack of napkins. I don't know why, but all of a sudden I want to hear what Miss Leafold got to say to this. She my boss. I guess everybody wonder what they boss think of them. It will be nice, Miss Leafold say, taking a little puff of her cigarette. Not having her use the one in the house. I bid three spades. That's exactly why I've designed the Home Health Sanitation Initiative, Miss Hilly say as a disease-preventative measure. I'm surprised by how tight my throat gets. It's a shame I learned to keep down a long time ago. Miss Skeeter looked real confused. The home, the what? A bill that requires every white home to have a separate bathroom for the colored help. I've even notified the Surgeon General in Mississippi to see if he'll endorse the idea. I pass. Miss Skeeter. She frowning at Miss Hilly. She set her cards down face up and say, really matter of fact, maybe we ought to just build you a bathroom outside, Hilly. And law, did that room get quiet. Miss Hilly say, I don't think you ought to be joking around about the college situation. Not if you want to stay on as editor of the league, Skeeta feeling. Miss Skeeta kind of laughed, but I can tell she don't think it's funny. What, you'd kick me out for disagreeing with you? Miss Hilly raised an eyebrow. I'll do whatever I have to do to protect our town. You'll lead, Mama. I go in the kitchen and don't come out again till I hear the door close after Miss Hilly behinds. Miss Hilly's behind. When I know Miss Hilly gone, I put May Mobley in her playpen, drag the garbage bin out to the street because the truck's coming by today. At the top of the driveway, Miss Hilly and her crazy Mama near bow back over me in the car. Then yell out all friendly how sorry they is. I walk in the house, glad I ain't got two new broken legs. When I go in the kitchen, Mosquito's in there. She's leaning against the counter. Got a serious look on her face, even more serious than usual. Hey, Mosquito, I got you something? I get you something? She glanced out at the driveway where, where Miss Leafolt's talking to Miss Hilly through the car window. No, I'm just waiting. I dry a, towel, a tray with a towel. When I sneak a look over, she's still got her worried eyes on that window. She don't look like other ladies, being she's so tall. She got real high cheekbones, blue eyes that turn down, giving her a shy way about her. It's quiet, except for the little radio on the counter playing the gospel station. I wish you'd go on out of here. 
Is that Preacher Green's sermon you're playing on the radio? She asked. Yes, ma'am, it is. Miss Skeeter kind of smiled. That reminds me so much of my maid growing up. Oh, I knew Constantine, I say. Miss Skeeter moved her eyes from the window to me. She raised me. Did you know that? I nod, wishing I hadn't said nothing. I know too much about that situation. I've been trying to get an address for her family in Chicago, she said, but nobody can tell me anything. I don't have it either, ma'am. Miss Skeeter moved her eyes back to the window. On Miss Healy's Buick, she shake her head just a little. Abilene, that talk in there, Healy's talk, I mean. I pick up a coffee cup, start drying it real good with my cloth. Do you ever wish you could change things, she asks. And I can't help myself. I look at her dead on, because that's one of the stupidest questions I ever heard. She got a confused, disgusted look on her face like she'd done salted her coffee instead of sugared it. I turn back to my washing so she don't see me rolling my eyes. Oh, no, ma'am, everything's fine. But that talk in there about the bathroom, and smack on that word, Miss Leafle walk in the kitchen. Oh, there you are, Skeeter. She took a look at us, both kind of funny. I'm sorry, did I, did I interrupt something? We both stand there, wonder what she might have heard. I have to run, Miss Skeeter says. See you tomorrow, Elizabeth. She opened the door back. Say, thanks, Abilene, for lunch. And she's gone. I go in the dining room, start clearing the bridge table, and just like I knew she would, Miss Leafo come in behind me wearing her upset smile. Her neck sticking out like she fixin' to ask me something. She don't like me talking to her friends when she ain't around. Never has. Always wanting to know what we were saying. I go right on past her into the kitchen. I put baby girl in her high chair and start cleaning the oven. Miss Leafo followed me in there. I eyeball a bucket of Crisco, put it down. Baby girl hold her arms out for her mama to pick her up, but Miss Leaf will open a cabinet, act like she don't see. There she slam it closed, open another one. Finally, she just stand there. I'm down on my hands and knees, pretty soon my head so far in that oven I look like I'm trying to gas myself. You and Miss Skeeter look like you were talking awful serious about something. No, ma'am, she just asking, do I want some old clothes? I say, and it sound like I'm down in a well hole. Grease already working itself up my arms. Smell like an underarm in here. Don't take no time for sweats running down my nose, and every time I scratch at it, I get a plug. I get a plug of crud on my face. Gotta be the worst place in the world inside an oven. You in here? You either cleaning or you getting cooked. Tonight I just know I'm a, I'm gonna have that dream. I'm stuck inside and the gas gets turned on. I keep my head in that awful place because I'd rather be anywhere besides answering Miss Leifold's questions about what Miss Skeeter was trying to say to me, asking do I want to change things. After a while, Miss Leifold huff and go out to the carport. I figure she's looking at where she's going to build me a new colored bathroom. Chapter 2 You never know what living here, but Jackson, Mississippi be filled with 200,000 people. I see them numbers in the paper and I get to wonder where did them people live? Underground? Because I know just about everybody on my side of, of the bridge and plenty of white families too. And that sure don't add up to be no 200,000. Six days a week I take the bus across Woodrow Wilson Bridge to where Miss Lee Fult and all her white friends live. In a neighborhood called Bellhaven. Right next to Bellhaven be the downtown and the state capital. Capitol building is real big, pretty on the outside, but I've never been in it. I wonder what they pay to clean that place. Down the road from Bellhaven is White Woodland Hills. Then Sherwood Forest, which is miles of big live oak trees with the moss hanging down. Nobody living in it yet, but there it's been for there it but it's there for when the white folks is ready to move somewhere else new. Then it's the country out where Miss Skeeter live on the Longleaf Cotton Plantation. She don't know it, but I picked cotton out there in 1931 during the Depression when we didn't have nothing to eat but stay at cheese. So Jackson's just one white neighborhood after the next and more springing up down the road. But the color part of town, we one big ant hill surrounded by state land that ain't for sale. As our numbers get bigger, we can't spread out. Our part of town just gets thicker. I get on the number six bus that afternoon, which goes from Bellhaven to Ferris Street. The bus today is nothing but maids heading home in our white uniforms. We all chatting and smiling at each other like we own it. Not because we mind if there's white people on it. We can sit anywhere we want to now, thanks to Miss Parks, just because it's a friendly feeling. 
I spot Minnie in the back center seat. Minnie's short, big, got shiny black curls. She's sitting with her legs splayed, her thick arms crossed. She's 17 years younger than I am. Minnie could probably lift this bus up over her head if she wanted to. Old lady like me lucky is lucky to have her as a friend. I take the seat in front of her and turn around and listen. Everybody liked to listen to Minnie. So I said, Miss Walters, the world don't want to see your naked white behind any more than they want to see my black one. Now get in this house, put your underpants and some clothes on. On the front porch naked, Kiki Brown asked. Her ha behind hanging to her knees. The bus is laughing and chuckling and shaking their heads. Law, that woman crazy, Kiki said. I don't know how you always seem to get the crazy ones, Minnie. Oh, like your Miss Patterson ain't, Miss Minnie say to Kiki. Shoot, she called a roll of the crazy lady club. The whole bus be laughing now because Minnie don't like nobody to talk about, about her white lady except herself. That's her job and she owned the rights. The bus across the bridge the bus cross the bridge and make the first stop in the colored neighborhood. A dozen or so maids get off. I go sit in the open seat next to Minnie. She smiled, bumped me hello with her elbow. Then she relaxed back in her seat because she don't have to put on no show for me. How you doing? You have to iron pleats this morning? I laugh, nod my head. It took me an hour and a half. What you feed Miss Walters at Bridge Club today? I worked all morning making that food a caramel cake and then she wouldn't eat a crumb. That makes me remember what Miss Hilly said at the table today. Any other white lady and no one would care, but we'd all want to know if Miss Hilly after us. I just know, don't know how to put it. I look out the window at the color hospital go by, the fruit stand. I think I heard Miss Hilly say something about that, about her mama getting skinny. I say this careful as I can't say maybe she getting malnutritioned. Minnie, look at me. She did, did she? Just the name make her eyes narrow. What else, Miss Hilly, say? I better just go on and say, I think she got her eye on you, Minnie. Just be extra careful around her. Miss Hilly ought to be extra careful around me. What she say, I can't cook? She say that old bag of bones ain't eating because I can't feed her? Minnie stand up, throw her purse up on her arm. I'm sorry, Minnie, I only told you so you stay out of her. She ever say that to me, she gonna get a piece of Minnie for lunch. She huffed down the steps. I watch her through the window, stomping off toward her house, and Miss Healy ain't somebody to mess with. La, oh, maybe I should have just kept it to myself. A couple mornings later, I get off the bus, walk the block to Miss Leifold's house, parked in front of is an old lumber truck. These two colored men inside, one drinking a cup of coffee, the other asleep, sat straight up. I go on past, into the kitchen. Miss... Mr. Riley Leifold, still at home this morning, which is rare. Whenever he here, he looked like he just counting the minutes till he get to go back to his accountant job, even on Saturday, but today he carrying on about something. This is my damn house, and I pay for what goddamn goes in it, Mr. Leifold yelled. Miss Leifold trying to keep up behind him with that smile that means she ain't happy. I hide out in the washroom. It's been two days since the bathroom talk come up, and I was hoping it was over. Mr. Leifel opens the back door to look at the truck sitting there, slam it back closed again. I put up with the new clothes, all the damn trips to New Orleans with you, your sorority sisters, but this takes the goddamn cake. But it'll increase the value of the house. Hilly said so. I'm still in the washroom, but I can almost hear Miss Leifel trying to keep that smile on her face. We can't afford it, and we don't, and we do not take orders from the Holbrooks. Everything get real quiet for a minute, and then I hear the pap pap. A little feed em pajamas. Daddy? I come out the washroom and into the kitchen then, cause me Mobley's my business. Mr. Leafle already kneeling down to her. He's wearing a smile that looks like it's made out of rubber. Guess what, honey? She smiled back. She waiting for a good surprise. You're not going to college, so your mama friends don't have to use the same bathroom as the maid. He stomp off and slammed the door so hard it made baby girl blink. Miss Leafle looked down at her at her start shaking her finger. May Mobley, you know you're not supposed to climb up out of your crib. Baby girl, she looking at the door her daddy slammed. She looking at her mama frowning down at her. My baby, she swallowing it back like she trying real hard not to cry. I rush past Miss Leafo, pick baby girl up, I whisper, let's go on into the living room playing with the talking toy. What's that donkey say? 
She's She keeps getting up. I put her back in bed three times this morning. Because somebody needs changing. Woo-wee. Miss Lefo Tis say. Well, I didn't realize, but she already staring out the window at the lumber truck. I go on to the back, so mad I'm stomping. Baby girl been in that bed since 8 o'clock last night. Of course she needs changing. Miss Leafolt tried to sit in 12 hours worth of bathroom mess without getting up. I lay baby girl on the changing table, try to keep my mat inside. Baby girl stare up at me while I take her off and take off her diaper. Then she reach out her little hand. She touched my mouth real soft. May mo been bad, she say. No, baby, you ain't been bad. I say smooth in her hair back. You been good, real good. I live on Jessam Avenue, where I've been renting since 1942. You could say Jessam got a lot of personality. The houses all be small, but every front yard's different. Some scrubby and grass, grassless like a bald-headed old man. Others got azalea bushes and roses and thick green grass. My yard, I reckon it'd be somewhere in between. I got a few red camellia bushes out front of the house. My grass be kind of spotty. I still got a big yellow mark where tree lords pick up sat for three months after the accident. I ain't got no trees, but the backyard now, it looks like the Garden of Eden. That's where my next door neighbor Ida Peek got her vegetable patch. Ida ain't got no backyard to speak of with all her husband's junk, car engines, and old refrigerators and tires. Stuff he say he gon' fix, but never do. So I tell Ida she come plant on my side. That way I don't have no mowing to tend to and she let me pick whatever I need. Save me two or three dollars every week. She put up what we don't eat. Give me jars for the winter season. Good turnip grains, eggplant, okra by the bushel. All kinds of gourds. I don't know how she keep them bugs out of her tomatoes, but she do and they good. That evening it raining hard outside. I pull out a jar of Ida Peaks cabbage and tomato eat my last slice of leftover cornbread and then I sit down to look over my finances cause two things done happen the bus gone up to 15 cents a ride and my rent gone up to $29 a month I work for Miss Leifolt 8 to 4, 6 days a week except Saturdays I get paid $43 every Friday which come to 172 a month that means after I pay the lap bill the water bill, the gas bill and the telephone bill I got $13.50 a week left for my groceries, my clothes, getting my hair done, and tied them to the church. Not to mention the cost to mail these bills done gone up to a nickel. And my work shoes is so thin they look like they starving to death. New pair costs $7 though, which means I'll be eating cabbage and tomato till I turn into Br'er Rabbit. Thank the Lord for Ida Peak, else I'd be eating nothing. My phone ring, making me jump. Before I can even say hello, I hear Minnie. She's working late tonight. Miss Healy sending Miss Walters to the old lady home. I got to find myself a new job, and you know when she's going? Next week. Oh, no, Minnie. I've been looking, called ten ladies today, not even a speck of interest. I'm sorry to say I ain't surprised. I asked Miss Leafolt first thing tomorrow, do she know anybody need help? Hang on, Minnie say. I hear old Miss Walter talking, and Minnie say... What you think I am, a chauffeur? I ain't driving you to no country club in the pouring rain. Side stealing. Worst thing you you do for your career as a maid is have a smart mouth. Still, she's such a good cook, sometimes it makes up for it. Don't you worry, Minnie. We're going to find somebody deaf as a doughnob, just like Miss Walter. Miss Hilly been hinting around for me to come to work for her. What? I talk stern as I can. Now you look here, Minnie. I support you myself or I let you work for that evil lady. Who you think you're talking to, Abilene, a monkey? I might as well go work for the KKK and you know I never take you old May's job away. I'm sorry, lordy me. I just get so nervous when it come to Miss Healy. I call Miss Caroline over on Honeysuckle, see if she knows somebody. And I call Miss Ruth. She's so nice. It near about break your heart. Used to clean up the house near more every morning so I didn't have nothing to do but keep her company her husband died of scarlet fever mm -hmm. thank you uh, hey, now come on Miss Walters eat up a little green bean for me Minnie say goodbye and hang up the phone the next morning there's that old green lumber truck is again bangin's already started but Mr. Leifolt ain't stomping around today I guess he know he done lost this one before it even started 
Miss Leafle sat at the kitchen table in her blue quilt bathrobe talking on the telephone. Baby girl's got red sticky all over her face, hanging onto her mama's knee trying to get her to look at her. Morning, baby girl, I say. Mama, mama, she said, trying to call up in Miss Leafolt's lap. No, May Mobley, Miss Leafolt nudged her down. Mama's on the telephone. Let mama talk. Mama, pick up, May Mobley whined and reached out her arms to her mama. Pick me mo up. Hush, Miss Leafolt whispered. I scoop baby girl up right quick and take her over to the sink, but she keep craning her neck around, whining, Mama, Mama, trying to get her attention. Just like you told me to say, Miss Leafle, nodding into the phone. Someday when we move, it'll raise the value of the house. Come on, baby girl, put your hands here under the water. But baby girl wriggling hard. I'm trying to get the soap on her fingers, but she twisting and turning, and she snaked right out of my arm. She runs straight to her mom and stick out her chin, and then she jerked the phone cord hard as she can, and the receiver clatter out of Miss Lee Folt's hand and hit the floor. May Mobley, I say. I rush to get her, but Miss Lee Folt get there first. Her lips is curled back from her teeth in a scared smile. Miss Lee Folt slapped baby girl on the back of her bare leg so hard I jumped from the sting. Then Miss Leafolt grabbed May Mobley by the arm, jerk it hard with every word. Don't you touch this phone again, May Mobley, she say. Abilene, how many times do I have to tell you to keep her away from me when I'm on the phone? I'm sorry, I say, and I pick up May Mobley, try to hug her to me. But she bawling and her face is red and she find me. Come on, baby girl, it's all right. Everything, May Mobley make an ugly face at me and then she reared back and boop, she whacked me right on the ear. Miss Leafolt point, Leafolt point at the door and yell, Abilene, you both just get out. I carry her out the kitchen. I'm so mad at Miss Leafolt, I'm biting my tongue. If the fool would just pay her child some attention, this wouldn't happen. When we make it to May Mobley's room, I sit in the rocking chair. She sob on my shoulder and I rub her back. I'm glad she can't see the mad on my face. I don't want her to think it's at her. You okay, baby girl? I whisper. My ears smarting from her little fist. I'm so glad she hit me instead of her mama because I don't know what that woman would have done to her. I look down and see red finger marks on the back of her legs. I'm here, baby. Ab Abby's here. I rock and soothe and rock and soothe. But baby girl, she just cry and cry. Around lunchtime when my stories come on TV, it gets quiet out on the carport. May Mobley's in my lap, helping me string the beans. She's still kind of fussy from this morning. I reckon I am too, but I done pushed it down to a place where I don't have to worry with it. We go on in the kitchen, and I fix her bologna sandwich. In the driveway, the workman is getting sitting in the truck eating their own lunches. I'm glad for the peace. I smile over at baby girl, give her a strawberry. So grateful I was here during the trouble with her mama. I hate to think what would happen if I wasn't. She stuffed the strawberry in her mouth and smiled back. I think she feel it, too. Miss Leafolt ain't here, so I think about calling Minnie at Miss Walter, see if she found any work yet. But before I get around to it, then there's a knock on the door. I open it to see one of the workmen standing there. He real old, got coveralls on over a white collar shirt. Heidi, ma'am, trouble you for some water, I, he asked. I don't recognize him. Must live somewhere south of town. Show enough, I say. I go get a paper cup from the cupboard. It's got happy birthday balloons on it from when May Mobley turned two. I know Miss Leafolt don't want me giving him a tall, one of the glasses. He drink it in one long swallow and hand me the cup back. His face be real tired, kind of lonesome in the eyes. How y'all coming along, I ask. It's work, he say. Still ain't no water to it. Reckon we run a pipe out yonder from the road. Other fella need a drink, I ask. Be mighty nice, he nod, and I go get his friend a little funny-looking cup, too. Fill it up from the sink. He don't take her to his partner right away. Beg a pardon, he say, but where? He stands there a minute, looking down at his feet. Where I, might I go to make water? He look up, and I look at him for a minute. We'd just be looking. I mean, it's one of them funny things. Not the ha-ha funny, but the funny where you be thinking, huh? Here we is with two in the house and one being built, and they still ain't no place for this man to do his business. Well, <clears throat> I ain't never been in this position before. The young un, Robert, who do the yard every two weeks, I guess he go for. He come over, but this fella, he a old man. 
Got heavy wrinkled hands, 70 years of word done put so many lines in his face. He like a road map. I spec you going to have to go in the bushes back of the house, I hear myself say, but I wish it weren't me. Dog's back there, but he won't bother you. All right, then, he says, thank you. I watch him back real slow with a cup of water for his partner. The banging and the digging go on the rest of the afternoon. All the next day long, there's hammering and digging going on in the front yard. I don't ask Miss Leefolt no questions about it. And Miss Leefolt don't offer no explanation. She just peer out the back door every hour to see what's going on. Three o'clock, the racket stops and the men get in the truck and leave. Miss Leefolt, she watch him drive off, let out a big sigh, and then she get in her car and go do whatever it is she do when she ain't nervous about a couple of colored men hanging around her house. After a while, the phone ring. Miss Leaf, she telling everybody in town I'm stealing. That's why I can't get no work. That witch done turned me into the smart mouth criminal maid of Hines County. Hold on, Minnie, get your breath. Before I work this morning, I go to the Renfro's over on Sycamore and Miss Renfro near about chased me off the property. Say, Miss Healy told me about her. Everybody knows I stole the candelabra from Miss Walters. I can hear the grip she's got on the phone. Sounds like she's trying to crush it in her hand. I hear Kendra holler and I wonder about Minnie already home. She usually don't leave work till four. I ain't done nothing but feed that old woman good food and look after her. Minnie, I know you honest. God know you honest. Her voice dipped down like bees on a comb. When I walk into Miss Walters, Miss Healy be there and she try and give me twenty dollars. She said, take it. I know you need it. And I about spit in her face, but I didn't know, sir. Start, she start making this panting noise. She said, I did worse what you did. I ain't telling. I ain't telling nobody about that pie. But I give her what I deserve, what she deserved. She wailing now, and I feel a real cold fear. Ain't no game crossing, Miss Hilly. I ain't never gonna get no work again. Leroy gone. Kill me. Kendra gets to crying in the background. Minnie hang up without even saying goodbye. I don't know what she talking about a pie, but law. Me, knowing Minnie, it could not have been good. That night, I picked me a poke salad and a tomato out of Ida's garden. I fry up some ham, make a little gravy for my biscuit. My wig been brushed out and put up. Got my pink rollers in, already sprayed the good enough on my hair. I've been worried all afternoon thinking about Minnie. I got to put it out of my mind if I'm going to um, get, get some sleep tonight. I set up my table to eat, turn on the kitchen radio. Little Stevie Wonders singing fingertips. Being colored ain't nothing on that boy. He twelve years old, blind, and got a hit on the radio. When he done, I skip over Pastor Green playing his sermon and stop on WBLA. They play the juke joint blues. I like them smoky liquor drinking sounds when it get dark. Make me feel like my whole house is full of people. I can almost see him swaying here in the kitchen, dancing to the blues. When I turn off the ceiling light, I pretend we at the Raven. These little tables with red covered lights, it's May or June and warm. My man Clyde flashed me his white two smile and said, Honey, you want a drink? And I say, Black Mary, straight up. And then I get to laughing at myself, sitting in my kitchen, having this day drink, because the raciest thing I ever take is the purple knee high. Memphis Mini get to singing on the radio how lean meat won't fry, which is about how she how the love don't last. Time to time I think I might find myself another man, one from church. Problem is, much as I love the Lord, church going man never do all that much for me. Kind of man I like ain't the kind that stays around when he done spending all your money. I made that mistake twenty years ago when my husband Clyde left me for that no count hussy up on Fair Street, one they call Coco. I figured I'd better shut the door for good on that kind of business. A cat gets screeching outside and bring me back to my cold kitchen. I turn the radio off and the light back on and fish my prayer book out of my purse. My prayer book is just a blue notepad I pick up at the Ben Franklin store. I use a pencil so I can erase till I get it right. I've been writing my prayers since I was in junior high. When I tell my seventh grade teacher I ain't coming back to school because I got to help my mama out. Miss Ross just about cried. You're the smartest one in the class, Abilene, she say. The only way you're going to keep sharp is to read and write every day. So I started writing my prayers down instead of saying them. But nobody's called me smart since. 
I turned the pages of my prayer book to see who I got tonight. A few times this week I thought about maybe putting Miss Skeeter on my list. I'm not sure will why. She's always nice when she always nice when she come over. It make me nervous, but I can't help but wonder what she was gonna ask me in Miss Lee Folt's kitchen about do I want to change things? Not to mention her ask me the whereabouts of Constantine, her maid grown up. I know what happened between Constantine and Miss Skeeter's mama, and ain't no way I'm on to tell her that story. The thing is, though, if I start praying for Miss Skeeter, I know that conversation going to continue the next time I see her. And the next and the next, because that's the way prayer do. It's like electricity, it keeps things going. And the bathroom situation, it just ain't something I really want to discuss. I scout down my prayer list. My May Mobley got the number one rung. Then there's Fanny Lou at church, Aileen from the rheumatism. My sisters, Inez and Mabel and Port Gibson that got 18 kids between them and six with the flu. When the list be thin, I slip in that old stinky white fella that lived behind the feed store, the one lost his mind from drinking the shoe polish. But the list be pretty full tonight. And look at there. Who else I done put on this list? Betrina, Bessemer, all people. Everybody know Betrina. And me don't talk to each other ever since she called me a nigga fool for marrying Clyde umpteen years ago. Minnie, I say last Sunday. Why Betrina asked me to pray for her? We walking home from the one o'clock service, Minnie say, Rumor is you kind of got some prayer power. Get better results than just the regular variety. Say what? Eudora Green, when she broke her hip... When on your list up walking in a week, Isaiah fell off the cotton truck on your prayer list that night, back to work the next day. Hearing this made me think about how it didn't even get the chance to pray for tree lore. Maybe that's why God took him so fast. He didn't want to have me uh, to argue with me. Snuff Washington, many say. Lolly Jackson. Heck, Lolly go on your list. And two days later, she pop up from her wheelchair like she touched Jesus. Everybody in Hines County know about that one. But that ain't me, I say. That just prayer. But Petrina, Minnie got to laugh and say, You know Coco, the one Clyde run off with? <laughs> you know, I never forget her. Week after Clyde left you, I heard that Coco wake up to her coochie spoilt like a rotten oyster. Didn't get better for three months. Petrina, she good friends with Coco. She know your prayer work. My mouth drop open. Why she never tell me this before? Are you saying people think I got the black magic? I know it make you worry if I told you. They just think you got a better connection than most. We all on a party line to God, but you, you sitting right in his ear. My teapot start fussing. Teapot start fussing on the stove, bringing me back to real life. Oh, I reckon I just go ahead and put Miss Skeeter on the list, but how come I don't know? Which reminds me of what I don't want to think about: that Miss Leifold's building me a bathroom because she thinks I'm diseased. And Miss Skeeter asking, don't I want to change things? Like changing Jack's and Mississippi gonna be like changing a light bulb. I'm stringing beans in Miss Leifold's kitchen and the phone rings. I'm hoping it's Minnie to say she found something. I done called everybody. I even waited on. I ever waited on. They all told me the same thing. We ain't hiring. But what they really mean is we ain't hiring Minnie. Even though Minnie already had her last day of work three days ago, Miss Walter called Minnie in secret last night and asked her to come in today because the house feels too empty. What with most of the furniture already taken away by Miss Hilly, I still don't know what happened with Minnie and Miss Hilly. I reckon I don't really want to know. Lee Folt Residence. Um, hi, this is the lady stop. Clear her throat. Hello, may I, may I please speak to Elizabeth Learfolt? Miss Lee Folt ain't home right now. May I take a message? Oh, she say like she got all excited over nothing. May I ask who's calling? This is Celia Foote. My husband gave me this number here, and I don't know, Elizabeth, but, well, he said she knows all about the Children's Benefit and the Ladies' League. I know this name, but I can't quite place it. This woman talks like she's so from so deep in the country she got corn growing in her shoes. Her voice is sweet, though, high-pitched. Still, she don't sound like the ladies around here do. I give her your message. I say, what's your number? I'm kind of new here. Well, that's not true. I've been here really a, a pretty good stretch. Gosh, over a year now, I, I just don't really know anybody. I don't get out much. She clears her throat again. I'm wondering why she's telling me all this. I'm the maiden. She ain't going to win friend, no friends talking to me. I was thinking maybe I could help out with the children's benefit from home, she say. 
I remember then who she is. She the one Miss Healy and Miss Leafolt talking about trash on cause she marry Miss Healy's old boyfriend. I give her the message. What you say your number is again? Oh, but I'm fixing to scoot off to the grocery store. Oh, maybe I should just sit and wait. She don't reach you, she leave a message with your help. I don't have any help. In fact, I was planning on asking her about that too. If she could pass along the name of somebody good. You looking for help? I'm in a stitch trying to find somebody to come all the way over to Mount Madison County. Well, what do you know? I know somebody real good. She known for her cooking and she look after your kids too. She even got her own car to drive out to your house. Oh, well, I'd still like to talk to Elizabeth about it. Did I already tell you my number? No, ma'am, I sigh. Go ahead. Miss Leafle never gonna recommend Minnie, not with all of Miss Healy's lies. She say, it's Mrs. Johnny Foote, and it's Emerson 26609. Just in case, I say. And her name is Minnie. She at Lakewood, 84432. You got that? Baby girl tug on my dress, say, turn to my heart. And she rubbing her belly. I get an idea. I say, hold on. What's that, Miss Leafle? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I tell her. I put the phone back to my mouth. Say, Miss Celia, Miss Leafo, just walk in. She say she ain't feeling good. But for you to go on, call Miss Meanie. She say you call her, it, you, she say call you if she be needing help with the benefit. She'll call you if she need, be needing help with the benefit. Oh, tell her I say thank you. And I sure do hope she gets to feeling better. And to call me up any time. That's Mina Jackson at Lakewood 84432. Hang on, what's that? I get a cookie and give it to me. Mobley feel nothing but delight at the devil in me. I am lying and I don't even care. I tell Miss Celia Foote. She say don't tell nobody about her tip on Minnie because all her friends want to hire her and they'd be real upset if they find out she give her to somebody else. I won't tell her secret if she won't tell mine. I don't want my husband to know I'm hiring a maid. Well, if that ain't perfect, then I don't know what is. Soon as we hang up, I dial Minnie quick as I can, but just as I do, Miss Leafle walk in the door. This is a real predicament. See, I gave this Mrs. Mrs. Miss Celia woman Minnie's number at home. But Minnie working today because Miss Walter lonely. So when she call, Leroy gon' give her Miss Walter number because he a fool. If Miss Walter answer the phone when Miss Celia call, then the whole jig is up. Miss Walter going to tell this woman everything. Miss Healy been spreading around. I got to get to Minnie or Leroy before all this happened. Miss Leafle head back to her bedroom and, just like I figured, the first thing she do is tie up the phone. First she called Miss Healy. Then she called the hairdresser. Then she called the store about a wedding present. Talking, talking, talking. Soon as she hang up, she come out and ask what they have for supper this week. I pull out the notebook and go down the list. No, she don't want pork chops. She trying to get her husband to reduce. She wants skillet steak and green salad. And how many calories do I expect them meringue th thingies have? And don't give n no more cookies to Mae Mobley because she too fat. And, and, and. La, for a woman who ain't said nothing to me but do this and use that bathroom. All of a sudden she talking to me like I'm her best friend. Mae Mobley stands in a hot foot jig trying to get her mama to notice her. And just when Miss Leafle about to bend down to pay her some attention, whoops, Miss Leafle run out the door because she forgot to get an errand to run and bloom an hour done past already. I can't make my fingers go round that dial fast enough. Minnie, I got a job lined up, but you got to get to the phone. She already called. Many voices flatly. Roy, give her the number. So Miss Walter, I answer it, I say. Deaf is doo-doo, and all of a sudden it's like a miracle from God. She hear the phone ring, and I'm going in and out of the kitchen, not paying attention, but at the end, I hear my name. Then Leroy call, and I know that's what it was. Mini sound wore out, and she the kind that don't ever get tired. Well, maybe Miss Walter didn't tell her them lies, Miss Hilly started. You never know, but even I ain't fool enough to believe this. Even if she didn't, Miss Walters know all about how I got back at Miss Hilly. You don't know about the terrible, awful thing I did. I don't ever want you to know. I'm sure Miss Walters tell this woman I'm nothing short of the devil itself. Her voice sound eerie, like she a record player going too slow. I'm sorry, I wish I could have called you earlier so you could pick up that phone. You done what you can. 
Nothing nobody can do for me now. I'll be praying for you. Thank you, she's saying, her voice break down, and I thank you for trying to help me. We hang up and I go to mopping. The sound of Minnie's voice scare me. She's always been a strong woman, always fighting after Tree Lord dies. She carries something over to me every night for three months straight. And every day she'd say, Nuh-uh, you ain't leaving me on this sorry earth without you. But I tell you, I was sure enough thinking about it. I already had the rope tied when Minnie found it. The coil was Tree Lord tree lures for, from back when he doing a sign project with pulleys and rings. I don't know if I was going to use it, knowing it's a sin against God, but I wasn't in my right mind. Many though, she don't ask no questions about it. Just pull it out from under the bed, put it in the can, take it to the street. When she come back in, she brush her hands together like she cleaning things up as usual. She all business, that many. But now she sound bad. I got a mind to check under her bed tonight. I put down the bucket of sunshine cleaner than ladies. Them ladies is always smiling about on the TV. I got to sit down. May Mobley come up, holding her tummy, say, Make it not hurt. She lay her face on my legs. I smooth her hair down over and over till she practically purr and fill in the love in my hand. And I think about all my friends, what they had done for me. What they do every day for the white woman they waiting on. That pain in Minnie's voice, tree lord dead in the ground, I look down at baby girl, who I know deep down I can't keep from turning out like her mama, and all of it together roll out on top of me. I close my eyes, say the Lord's Prayer to myself, but it don't make me feel any better. La, help me, but something's going to have to be done. Baby girl hug on my legs all afternoon to where I about fall over a few times. I don't mind. Miss Leifold ain't said nothing to me or May Mobley since this morning been busy working on that sewing machine in her bedroom trying to cover up something else she don't like the look of in the house. After a while, me and May Mobley go in the regular living room. I got a load of Mr. Leifold's shirts to iron after this. I'm on get a pot roast going. I cleaned the bathrooms already, got the sheets changed, the rugs vacuumed. I always try to finish up early so me and baby girl can sit together and play. Miss Leifold come in and watch me iron. She do that sometime frown and look. Then she smile real quick when I glance up. Pat up the back of her hair, trying to make it puffy. Abilene, I have a surprise for you. She's smiling big now. She don't have no teeth showing, just a lip. Smile, the kind you gotta watch. Mr. Leifold and I have decided to build your, you your very own bathroom. She clap her hands together, drop her chin at me. It's right out there in the garage. Yes, ma'am. Where she think I've been all this time. So from now on, instead of using the guest bathroom, you can use your own right out there. Won't that be nice? Yes, ma'am. I keep ironing. TV's on and my program's fixing to start. She keeps standing there looking at me, though. So you'll use that one in the garage now. You understand? I don't look at her. I'm not trying to make no trouble, but she done made her point. Don't you want to get some tissue and go on out there and use it? Miss Leifold, I don't really have to go right this second. May Mobley point at me from the playpen and say, May Mo juice. I get you some juice, baby, I say. Oh, Miss Leafoot lick her lips a few times. But when you do, you'll go on back there and use that one now. I mean, only that one, right? Miss Leafoot wear a lot of makeup, creamy looking stuff, thick. That yellowish makeup spread across her lips, too, so you can barely tell she even got a mouth. I say what I know she want to hear. I use my color bathroom from now on. And then I go on and Clorox the white bathroom again real good. Well, there's no hurry. Any time today would be fine. But by the way, she's standing there fiddling with her wedding ring. She really mean for me to do it right now. I put the iron down real slow, feel that bitter seed grow in my chest. The one planted after Tree Lord died. My face goes hot, my tongue twitchy. I don't know what to say to her. All I know is I ain't saying it. And I know she ain't saying what she want to say either. And it's a strange thing happening here because nobody's saying anything. And we still managing to have a conversation. We're going to end there today, friends. See you next time on my book nook. <laughs>